All right. The last video showed you how to center this piece of clay by using your left hand on the side, right hand on the top, and pushing down. Now, I am using the typical Western uh, type of centering, and I have my wheel rotating in a counterclockwise rotation. If my wheel were going clockwise, I would need to switch my hands, but I'm not ambidextrous, so I'm not going to try that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be dropping the middle on this. Now, the middle can only be dropped once it's completely centered. If you are trying to drop the middle and it's not centered, it's always going to be thrown off. There are so many different ways that people choose to drop the middles. When I first learned, I learned, like with my longest finger of my hand, I would take my middle finger and I'd kind of put it on there and then I made, a, made the hole going down. Okay? Some people like to use their index finger. I've seen some, some potters where they like to use two thumbs at the same time. All of those are great methods. I'm going to show you the way that I show my students because I think it's kind of a fail-safe way to help them get it centered in, uh, every time. Because a lot of times the kids get really excited and they just stick their finger in and they get it way off. Now, this is <clears throat> the hand position that I show my students. I'm going to take my left hand and gently support it on the side of the clay. Then I'm going to take my left thumb and I'm going to use it as a tool I've kind of made a, a jig here with my thumb, and I'm going to take it to the middlemost point that I can feel it's a midpoint there, and I'm going to drop it down. Now you always have to have water. You can see that I often keep my sponge in my upper hand so I can squeeze water on it, and I have dropped a middle. Now, the nice thing about doing the thumb thing this way is you can see that the hole is shaped um, you know, much wider at the top. I feel that students sometimes have an easier time of getting this centered uh, when it's wider like this because you kind of sneak up on the hole and you push it in and it goes in gradually. Whereas when they go straight down with a straight hole, sometimes they really get it off. Now, what I am going to do is I recommend to my students that they measure the thickness of the base until they're skilled enough to do it without measuring. I do recommend that they measure it. Now, I'm going to stop my wheel, and what I'm going to do to measure is I'm going to recommend a needle tool. Now I stick the needle tool in, notice there's no puddle in the bottom of it right now. Then I'm going to take my index finger, and I'm going to just allow my index finger to slide right along until I touch the clay, and then I'll bring it straight out. Now when I pull it out, you can see the distance between the tip of my finger and the tip of the needle tool. That's the thickness of the bottom. So I have roughly half inch you know, three, uh, three eighths of an inch to a uh, half inch is a nice step if you're planning on trimming a bottom. So now that I have that, that little hole there, without adding any water at all, I'm going to just take my dry finger and I'm just going to kind of come along in here and I'm compressing that. And now I've compressed that. Now, once you have a centered piece of clay where you have dropped the middle, which is what we've just done, now I'm ready to open it up, and opening, I am going to keep my left hand on the side again, and this time I'm going to use uh, whatever is most comfortable. If you like your thumbs, I'm going to use uh, multiple fingers of my right hand, and I'm going to be pulling the wall straight towards me, nice and slow, even motion, and again my left hand was there on the side. You always want to make sure that you have enough water. Um, there that your fingers are sliding and you're not causing friction because if you have friction it will throw it off. Now the last thing that I'm going to do with this opened wall before I uh, go to pull up and thin the wall is I'm just going to re-center the wall and I'm going to compress the edge. You can see this funny little flange right here that kind of happened when I pulled it open. I want this compressed down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, I refer to it as the duck bill Okay, so I imagine this as a little duck bill. I'm going to hold my hand securely side to side, and my elbow is locked, and then I'm going to press down with the right hand on top. So I've created a three-way centering uh, uh, channel through which the clay has to pass. So I'm squeezing on the inside, the outside, and the top. Okay, I'm just going to Speed that up a little bit there. There we go. 
Now, that is a nicely centered piece of clay, and it is ready to um, uh, compress the walls and, and make it a little higher. I am just going to go ahead and take my sponge and compress that bottom. There we go. And this is now ready to go. Oh, and you can see that I, I often take my sponge and I wipe away the uh, water there because I have a very small splash pan. It's only half a splash pan. Um, I usually try not to have too much water. Okay. And that, that's how you open it.